On the evening of the 10th of May, 2012, Lakshmi was typing an email in the community office when she experienced an overwhelmingly strong energy moving through her body. Later, it became clear that what had happened was a moment of self-realization, awakening, enlightenment, or satori. A satori can happen in this sudden and dramatic fashion, or in other ways, including a gentle and subtle shift over a longer time. Putting our preconceptions about awakening aside, this film gives us a raw, uncensored account of what happened to Lakshmi. Satori refers to the perception of the Buddha nature, or emptiness, in contrast to a brief glimpse or a first insight. Satori is considered to be a lasting realization of the nature of existence. Looking backwards, I would say five years ago, a big shift in my life happened. And it all started on a theater workshop. We did a warming up with music and I was spinning around to the music. And then I thought suddenly, I wonder how long the music will go, yeah? So, and, and I was busy with this thought, yeah? And then suddenly, completely suddenly, I realized how stupid this is, yeah? How I'm not enjoying just what I'm doing because I was enjoying it, how I got lost in my, in my thoughts, yeah? And it was because I, I, didn't, I never did spiritual work before anything, yeah? So that was a complete discovery for me. The first clear moments of feeling present I already had before, while I was playing on stage, while I was playing theater. Several times I had um, the feeling of that it's just happening, that I don't do it and um, something plays me. And, and then I think it was only three or four weeks later. When I was sitting in this first spiritual meeting with the teacher, I felt an enormous inner connection and it felt like home. Although I didn't understand um, the words which were spoken there, it felt amazingly familiar. I came more and more to his meetings and his retreats which were held in the open sky house near Cologne. And I decided after some time to move into the open sky house. So I'm living here now since four years, along with 20 residents. And my intention was that I could work more intensely with Pramananda. Since I have met him, I had strong openings where a lot of energy was filling my body and I experienced a very, very deep peace and contentment. Throughout the film, her teacher, Premananda, comments on the steps she is going through. During his 15 years as a teacher, he has worked with many people while traveling all over the world. And for the last seven years, he has worked intimately with people in a community. Lakshmi works closely and openly with Premananda as the main organizer of this community. Satori is a sudden experience and it is often described as a turning over of the mind. Just as a pair of scales will suddenly turn over when a sufficient amount of material has been poured into one pan to overbalance the weight in the other. Oh, oh my God. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god.
there was some kind of very strong energetic phenomena happening to her or with her, which we can call a satori. I mean, looking backwards, I would say it started um, somewhere when we were out, yeah, either... Ah, in the afternoon yeah, already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that may be interesting. Yeah. So that afternoon I had a, a doctor's appointment and <laughs> I took Lakshmi to translate for me. So actually Lakshmi, Nirvana and I went to, to the doctor and then after we had a coffee. So was it around that time? Yeah, I don't know when it exactly was, but I know the first time when, when I was driving back the car, I thought I felt something energy, a lot of energy around my heart. Yeah? And I thought, hmm, I wonder if this was a second cappuccino, yeah? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, usually I don't react strongly on coffee. I drink coffee, don't react strongly, but I had two cappuccinos. I thought, oh, perhaps this was who? Yeah? And I felt already this enormous energy in the eyes, yeah, it was like, tsss, yeah, and still here, yeah, and I thought, wow, yeah, poo, two cappuccinos, that's really <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that, that's interesting, yeah. yeah it was yeah. really, really, and, um, and then it got sort of stronger and stronger, I mean, it, it was so funny, yeah? Then I went to the toilet to see my eyes, because I had the feeling I had two like this size. <laughs> so I looked in the mirror and saw this amazing eyes, yeah? it was like mm. And then I went back on the desk and then I had the feeling, well, it can't be only the cappuccino. Yeah? <laughs> I remember I went to the desk and thought, I write this email and then I go more into it. Yeah? <laughs> amazing, yeah? completely amazing. So I, I said, and, 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 uh, and then my hands started to, a lot of energy came in my arms, and I started cramping, I couldn't write anymore. Mm. And I remember that I thought, um, I think with a heart attack you have pain. <laughs> 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 and and then, I, then I just surrendered to, to what happened. Yeah? And I just surrendered, and I remember that I had the feeling I, I f fell off uh, the chair. Yeah. But before anybody was there Well, to and help then I you. said Atma, yeah? I mm. And she came in. She was holding you. Yeah. Oh, there was enormous energy going, especially in the arms. I had cramps in my arms, I couldn't move the arms. And then the whole body was like on an electric chair, yeah? yeah. I didn't have any control anymore over my body. Yeah. Mm. In the beginning, she clearly couldn't function. She wouldn't have been able to sit on the chair without getting support. And it quite quickly we, we got a mattress and put it on the floor and we lifted her onto this mattress and she kind of collapsed onto the mattress. Oh. It was very clear during this whole film that she didn't do anything. There was a body and something happened to her, to this body. Yeah? So like you can feel it maybe with these big sighs that um, it's like the body is releasing something, you know, something like this, you see. Did you also get it like that? Yeah. I mean, I remember it's the first time I was not screaming. I remember the times before I always screamed a lot, yeah? I screamed yeah. like hell, yeah? But this time it was... Yeah, yeah, it was completely like take... Although, I mean, it happens, it just happens, yeah? Mm. Very strong. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, you see, what she's saying about screaming, because, um, you know, what, what is actually happening is somehow a huge energy phenomenon is happening. And, you know, the body is not really, um, well, most people's bodies are not really maybe ready for that. And that's why often it closes down quite quickly. But this is the third time or fourth time this has happened to Lakshmi. And she's anyway become a very kind of open woman. Um, you'll see that um, although there's this very strong energy, um, the body can take it. And so maybe why she's not screaming and only making those loud sounds is that, um, you know, the body is able to, to manage it. But I mean, it's, it's absolutely possible for this part of it to be experienced as pain, you see. Mm. And this is a rather an interesting thing because we're all having the idea that, um, you know, I'd love to have a Satori because it would be so wonderful. But maybe it's not going to be wonderful, maybe it's going to be painful. And, you know, in the beginning when she was sitting at the desk, she had these pains, strong pains in her arms and her hands were clamping. 
Um, she even wondered, oh, I'm having a heart attack. You don't know whether you're having a heart attack or you're having a, an awakening. You don't know. I mean, you pe people call the ambulance, yeah, probably. I mean, they call oh, the yeah. ambulance and <laughs> think you have a stroke or a heart attack or whatever, yeah. It's almost as if she was having a birth, you know, like a birthing something. It's not, doesn't look particularly lovely or blissful or sweet or any of those kind of words. It's more like she's going through actually a birth. She's birthing something, yeah? And in a way, um, it's a sense that she's actually birthing herself. I've given birth and the same thing is it takes you, yeah? Once the contractions but with the birth start, it just takes you over, yeah? And then the whole thing is happening without you doing anything, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that was exactly the same, yeah? It's just so strong, this energy suddenly entering your body that you just can let, only can let it happen, yeah? Whatever happens, yeah? So that sound was somebody making a print and I mean nothing touched her at all, it was all just happening to her and around her there was the normal theatre of life going on. Yeah, I remember with this drinking, there was something very strong going on with my tongue, yeah? It was like, if the tongue was the strongest muscle in my body somehow, and there was an enormous pressure or tension or whatever uh, in the tongue, it was completely strange. So she actually ended up drinking about a litre, or we poured in, you can see she's not really drinking it, we poured in a litre, and that acts as a kind of uh, plug and also just uh, lubricates the whole body, because with all this energy moving, the body somehow needs lubricating to ground the energy that's moving through her.
I didn't feel like it it was happening to Lakshmi or some someone. It just was happening. Something was happening, and it wasn't uh, personal. It was something happening. And this was beautiful. Just it's also happening. It's just happening here. Yeah? It's not to Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. In a way, there was an absence of Lakshmi. Yeah, we can say because body Lakshmi, we know her mm. through the body, yeah, Lakshmi. <laughs> <laughs> also, one thing I I remember. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a bit probably like baby's look. Yeah, you probably yeah see. I I don't know what it is. Yeah, but there were amazing things. Yeah, just I don't know. Yeah, but I remember that. Also, when it started, I looked at the, com the screen, has a little green or yellow thing with a, and before I said Atma, yeah, and all this energy came, I always looked at this point, it was so fascinating, yeah, this little thing on the screen, yeah, it was, oh, yeah, like, I don't know, LSD or something, it was, and it was a bit like this, I suddenly, sort of, my eyes, and then there was, oh, yeah, oh, wow, yeah, completely, my eyes got absorbed in, in I don't know what it was, yeah, a little something lump. Just a little, mark on the ceiling. Yeah, a mark on the ceiling, a little lump of paint or something, yeah. But it was like if my eyes would be like going into the lump, yeah, completely <laughs> amazing, mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And did you have an awareness of being like up on the ceiling or looking down on this body or something like that? No, in another moment I was somewhere because I saw you from this perspective, I saw you sitting on the computer. I don't know when this was, but this was one thing where it was a short thing where I saw you from, from above sitting on the computer and I saw a bit that I was laying there, but it was like, I don't know, a split of a second, yeah, I couldn't really, I saw sort of you there. I remember there was this point where I heard laughing, yeah, and I thought it sounded like my sister, yeah, it sounded like my sister laughing, like when we were teenagers and giggled on for ages and hours and hours, yeah, and I thought, oh, amazing, where's this laugh coming from, where's this laughing coming from, where's this, is she la here laughing, and then suddenly I realized I was in my body back, it was me laughing, yeah, but first there was only far away I heard this laughing somewhere, yeah, and then later, um, at, at the end, I, I suddenly experienced myself being this laughing. Yeah? But at the beginning, it was not like this. So th that was a very interesting thing. Yeah? But there was nothing I remember which was funny. Yeah? It was, um, I don't know, the, the, the funny other, or the funny or the interesting thing was. I don't know that it before first the laughing was somewhere else and then suddenly I was the laughing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the blue in a way, out of the laughing. There's no obvious reason. Nobody no. said anything. I mean, there was no obvious reason mm -hmm. to start laughing. Yeah, there was also something very interesting. I was laughing, 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 and then just laughing and then, and then a thought came, this thought, I mean, uh, suddenly I found it, of course, very funny, the last thoughts which were there, yeah, like this, oh my God, the guests, yeah, and one big thought I had, I hope they don't worry about me, yeah, <laughs> amazing, yeah? the last things which sort of come, yeah. I mean, we think, yeah, that we laugh about this thought, yeah, you have a thought and you laugh, yeah, but in this moment I could see that it's not true. <laughs> That we just think this because, I mean, I don't know, perhaps we learned this or something, yeah? It's just two things which are happening, but it's not, there is not sort of A leads to B, yeah, what we think, yeah? That was, that was the most amazing thing, actually, in this moment of, of laughing, yeah? And I remember that I completely could let go when I saw you, yeah? I saw you and then I didn't have to worry about the guests, I didn't have to worry that somebody's perhaps worrying about me, yeah? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> then I could completely let go. I remember this mm. also, yeah. The fact that she f saw me and could feel that she could trust the safety of this community, that you'll be looked after. There was um, Nirvana and Atma in the beginning, and then there was Durga, and I think some other people came. But we didn't interfere at all. Did you see that? It's very, very important, I would say, from my own experience. Yeah. 
this community. It's about, it's about that safety and that trust, you could say. And that is based on the love that's here. In fact, all the people who were meant to be in the organizing meeting, they all came and sat in the office. So actually there was about five or six people with their eyes closed very much sitting together. So there was a very nice energy coming. That was very, very, very beautiful, yeah? Even I didn't sort of realize it the whole time and I didn't know who, who all was there. I mean, I saw it now a bit on the video. I had the feeling I was very much supported and it was really, really beautiful, really beautiful. It was all right, it was peace all the time. Nothing kind of special, special. It, something stay in my memory. It was just a lot of energy and uh, just happening. It was beautiful to see like existing, just unfolding, like happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, after three hours, it was getting quite late, and so before everybody went to bed, we, we supported her to walk upstairs, and she, she, we put her in bed. I mean, I was very surprised when I finally was in bed. It was, I think, 12 o'clock. I was completely surprised, yeah? Because I would have thought this, the whole thing would have been perhaps one hour or one, of our, one and a half hours, yeah? If I would have guessed. And yet on the morning after, you were able to get in a car and drive and kind of manage Yeah, I was surprised, your day. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not really manage the day, but I was surprised that um, that I could get in the car and drive, yeah? I didn't know really if it would work. But somehow it did. That was easy. Mm. But with the work I, I only tried and gave up quite quickly. <laughs> Yeah, there's still, still something strong inside. I mean, right now, are you aware of thoughts being there, or are you pretty empty? Pretty empty. Mm. And it's been pretty empty since this happened, three days ago? Yeah. Um, in the morning, I went up to my room. I sat down, I think, to do something, but then I closed my eyes and that was it. Yeah. And the next was then an hour later or whatever it was, my phone was going off. Yeah. So. You still become identified again with the mind? What does it mean? What does it mean, identified yeah. with the mind? Mm. Well, I guess it means to um, act in a way that you are the mind. Mm. I'm sure there are situations uh, I do, yeah, I'm sure. Mm. But generally you're not s so caught up as you have been in the past. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Mm. I think the strongest identification I ever had was also, is being a mother, yeah? I think it's very, very strong identification, probably the strongest I ever had, I think. There, when, when this puberty drama happened with my daughter, 
I could clearly see yeah, the mind, yeah, all this. And it was very helpful to just see, yeah, it's, it was still very, very, very painful, yeah. But I mean, I could clearly see that it's a strong, strong identification. Yeah? And that's what causes the pain, the identification. Yeah? Satori comes upon one unawares, as something utterly unexpected. It implies an insight into the nature of self. Satori is the most intimate individual experience. We can never know if a person has a Satori or whether he merely imagines it. I mean, definitely once when I had this in Italy, that was very, very strong. After that, there was an enormous difference. Um, I think we did the original phase, mm -hmm. and somehow, ah, somehow afterwards, I somehow left my body. And then, I mean, the dramatic thing was that we had to go back by plane, and then people tried to sort of get me back into my body. But then mm. I couldn't feel my legs, I couldn't feel anything, and it was, it was so painful and so horrible. And they tried to massage me, and oh, it was a complete drama somehow. And then I remember that we were at the airport, and Mahima thought I'm completely in bliss, and I was completely, I was so, oh, it was so, it was so horrible. It was like I didn't want to live anymore, yeah, completely. Mm. And then she said, I s should sit next to you in the aeroplane. I sat next to you and then I talked a bit to you and then it yeah. got better, yeah? Then it got better, yeah? But then later there was, a, I think, a week um, where, where I couldn't function. I couldn't, I mean, I could walk, yeah? But that was it, more or less, really. The most time I just sat somewhere. And can you tell us uh, a bit about being out of the body? What, what, what was that like? I mean, I had this this time also for a short moment, yeah. yeah. For two short, for two moments, I had this. Yeah, I mean, it's just um, experience this. What we know, yeah, we are not the body, but I mean, it's difficult to know when you have headache and when you are sort of in it, yeah. But then, when you are have this experience of. Um, I mean, being out of it, but being there, yeah? You are completely there, but you're just not in your body, yeah? But everything is there, yeah? So, it just makes it completely clear that uh, you're not the body, yeah? <laughs> 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 it's, uh, yeah. And I mean, I remember in Italy, um, there was a very strong experience, yeah, that which I always remembered. I mean, it was there for a longer time, but since then I sort of know innerly that I'm not the body, that I'm also there without the body. Yeah? It's like, I mean, I saw some people dying, I, w I witnessed a dying pro process, and that's what I always imagined when people die, yeah? how it probably is. Yeah? And I don't know how it is, but... When I had this out-of-body experience, I thought, oh, it's probably how it is, yeah? You're sort of there, but you're not in the body. Mm. Do you have a different way of uh, understanding your life now? Like, you understand who you are a little bit differently than before? Yeah, I mean, definitely since Italy, there was a real sort of, like, cut, yeah? Completely, uh, if something was cut, yeah? Mm. For a long time, there was, I was very, very empty, and then it was not so empty, but it never was like before this many thoughts or things. But there was a very big, very big difference. Very mm -hmm. big difference.
is it right now? Good. Would you feel that the, the, the opening that happened? I mean, you've had a few other openings now. Yeah? You've had two or three other glimpses. I, I wouldn't call it open. It's a funny word for it, yeah? yeah? I mean, it's all words, yeah? I mean, more in direction, quiet and silent, I would say. Mm. And, and something sort of very subtle, but in direction, power? Power. Force, something? You, you have a sense of a lot of energy moving? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Especially when I close my eyes, it, it always comes, the energy. Yeah? When I walk around, I don't feel it, but when I close my eyes, especially for a longer time, I feel it quite strongly. Mm. Mm. And the mind is quiet? Mm-hmm. Mm. And you can still function, but maybe not all the time. Well, I can't function so well. Yeah? It's quite one-dimensional. It works quite good. But everything else gets very easily difficult, and there is a very um, not as strong at the, the beginning of the week. Uh, yeah, it's probably feeling vulnerable, yeah. But it really goes uh, like one centimeter in the into the body. Yeah, it's energetically s very strong sometimes. Yeah, when I sit and close my eyes, yet yeah, all it goes quite quickly, very deep. Yeah, and it's very beautiful. She would like to do it more. I must say. It's very nice, and sometimes mm -hmm. energy is moving. Then yeah? it's very, very beautiful. So you're you're actually very content with yourself this week. Yes, yeah. I mean, it has been before. Also, I'm usually quite content on my own. I must say, it has been before. Also, quite a happy bunny usually. Also on my own, yeah, <laughs> or not mm -hmm. on my own. No. <laughs> so, but this this week, I would say, it is stronger. Yeah, it's definitely. Definitely stronger. Mm. It's a, uh, when I close my eyes, it's a different. I mean, I usually don't feel as much energy moving in my body, and it's definitely different. I would say there was one thing shortly before I met you in the theater workshop. Yeah, there was another guy in the group. He was a Buddhist. He explained us um, that the most things in your head are not in the moment. Yeah, and then I became completely aware of this and always try to be aware when I had a thought which has not not anything to do with the moment, yeah? I mean, if you have to plan your plane ticket or something, of course, you have to yeah, think. Mm -hmm. But if anything, I always try to bring it back, yeah? That was sort of my self-made <laughs> practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing with the glimpse I found always very confusing when you tell what is this big opening and then it closes, yeah? And I've, I've never, I mean, with all this experience, I never had the feeling that it closes. Yeah? I mean, of course, the energy is not, um, I mean, after Italy, I also had a week where, I mean, it was much stronger energetically. Yeah? I nearly could sit and go to the toilet for one week. Yeah, I couldn't do, so there was much more energy still moving for, for a time. But um, it didn't, I mean, then I got more in the day and functioning, and of course it was not so quiet than it had been in this week, yeah? but I wouldn't say it closed. Since then, something completely stayed. Mm -hmm. Completely stayed, like, like I said, like this cut and... You know, it happened sitting on the chair in front of the computer, writing an email, you see. So, I mean, now we have to make that the meditation room and <laughs> move all the computers into the meditation room. <laughs> It's the energy for all these cables which are behind the chair. <laughs> 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 this horrible <laughs> cable mess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I mean, you you wouldn't see. I mean, that's a nice joke, but you you can't see any reason why this happened last Thursday evening. Yeah. Mm. There's no reason. It's just completely random happening. You could say. Yeah. Mm.
Is there something that you can reflect from the film that uh, touched you? Something you'd like to share? I mean, the whole happening is, is very touching, I find very touching. Did it happen to you? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing, eh? It's a, it's a happening. Eh? Yeah. It's a happening. Like when you're watching it, do you find yourself identifying that you're that one? Or is there something like a space and it's like, could be somebody else because... Mm, could be somebody else. Yeah. Could be somebody else. Yeah. I mean, there's sort of some very strong memories and physical memories, but uh, apart from this, it could be anybody. <laughs> That's the nicest thing, really, that it's not personal. Mm. I mean, always when I uh, saw myself on camera, I found it very, very horrible. You know? And I still, when I look at it, I think I look like a tortoise, you know? and very strange, but there's a big, big space. Yeah? It's, that's very different. It's like very far from me or nothing to do with me. There's a lot happening in the body. There's a lot happening. Mm. I have a lot of pain every day, actually. Yeah. 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 And sometimes a lot of energy moving. So this is more pleasant feeling. The pain is more an unpleasant feeling. <laughs> As far as the operating from the brain, it's not, um, if it has to operate, it's not easy. Yeah? Everything which is a bit more than one dimensional, when sort of, it very easy gets, I don't know, very difficult. And I think that also affects the body. I have the feeling that this affects the body if I then try to do it. Yeah? It sounds like there's still something going on inside where it's somehow becoming more grounded inside your body. Yeah? Because clearly there's much more energy moving at mm. the moment than maybe was before. So your body's somehow adjusting to this mm. bigger volume of energy. Yeah, there's this energy like sometimes in the night. Yeah? Um, I can't sleep, there's just energy moving in the night. I'm completely awake. Yeah? I think often for a long time, really. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that I often feel very vulnerable. And I think that's sort of, it's a feeling that the energy system is very open. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is sometimes very, very nice, yeah. Uh, but also was it nice in the flower garden today? Yes, it was very nice, yeah. 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 I mean, outside is very nice, yeah. The yeah. flower garden was very nice. and. Being on my own is very nice. Uh, <laughs> and my sense is that when I look at you, it feels very good what's happening. It's all right to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also good for people who are watching you right now to see that, you know, this is for real. You know, when, mm -hmm. when something really happens, it really mm -hmm. happens. And what happens is that the whole energy system somehow adjusts itself. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily uh, without pain or easily comfortable. So during the normal a day probably when there is not such a demand, it's not so easily felt probably, yeah? because the difference is not so big. Only when this, um, yeah, like you say, yeah, when probably your partner goes off with somebody else, yeah, or something like this, yeah, or your daughter becomes uh, amazingly sick or something, yeah, if some really 
big things uh, happen, I think then you can see the difference. Yeah? How much you are identified with yeah, having a lover or being a lover or being a mummy or whatever. Yeah? Before there were many moments where I sort of was in, in an effort somehow. Yeah, someone in an effort, yeah? feeling too responsible or having this feeling I have to do it yeah? in the organizing of the community. Yeah? I <coughs> something like some inner effort and um, yeah, this seems, yeah? I mean, I don't know if it stays, but this seems gone. Yeah? It seems uh, not there anymore. Which is very nice. <laughs> 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 Just feels very light. Eh? Mm. Very now yeah. you look back on all that. Mm. Is there something you would say to somebody who would see this film and feel some fear about that? It might be put off from the visual images. Mm. What would you say to those people? Well, one thing I would say, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, this is one energetic phenomena, yeah? but this sort of feeling of, of becoming free, it's a long process, yeah? It's a long, long process. I mean, a lot f just dropped during the open sky house by just living here. A yeah? lot of things. The thing is, I mean, you don't realize every time when something drops because suddenly it's not there anymore, yeah? And only by somehow looking backwards or coming in the same situations, you suddenly realize, oh, yeah, I, 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 I used to think this, yeah? Or I had these judgments or, or whatever, yeah? Or oh, this was difficult for me, yeah. But uh, not every time if something drops, you, mm. yeah. Oh no, this is dropped. This is dropped. It's not like this, yeah. But, I mean, we don't know anything really, yeah. We don't know anything, yeah. That's a very strong thing, especially at the beginning, yeah. When wherever I would go, I I thought, oh, what do we think, yeah? We think it's all happening like we think it's happening, yeah. But we don't know anything, yeah. And that makes it so clear that suddenly is this energy sort of like chung going into your body, yeah, and you don't have any control, yeah. It's just sort of a happening. Yeah? It's just and um, yeah, but what is it? Yeah, where does it come from? Where does it? I mean. Yeah. Satori is the sudden flashing into consciousness of a new truth. It is a perfectly normal state of mind. All mental activities will now work to a different key, more joyful and peaceful than ever before. Spiritually, it is a new birth. Intellectually, it is the acquiring of a new viewpoint. The world appears as if dressed in a new garment. What I can see, for example, uh, which is interesting, is after this um, blast uh, opening, there are certain things which I clearly can see which are not there anymore. Yeah? Uh -huh. right. Little things or bigger things, and it's just sort of like, oh, that's different now. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, one little thing, for example, I realized here and already in the open sky house was um, when I play instrument, yeah? usually when I play wrong, I always got nervous. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. I had this horrible music school teacher, yeah, who gave me a very hard time. So always when I play wrong, even if my mind says, oh, it completely doesn't matter, yeah, and I don't mind when other people play wrong, but still there was this contraction, like, oh, <gasps> yeah, getting, and this is gone, yeah? mm -hmm. it's just gone. I can play wrong and nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting because mm. I don't know. Yeah, suddenly it's gone. Yeah, suddenly it's realized. Oh, yeah, sort right, of like. Uh, right, right. Where's this Anything going? else like that? Um, before, I think I was much more bothered. Oh, did I do this wrong? Did I do this right? Should I have said something different? Should I have? And this is also less. Yeah, I just do it, and when I saw it's the wrong thing, I go and change it or whatever. Yeah, it's. Um, 
not so much doubts, perhaps. Mm. It's not so. Mm. Mm. And there isn't anybody, there's less of somebody to mind, less mm. of somebody to respond or something mm. like this. Yeah. Mm. Do you know who you are? Do I know? Yeah. No, I don't, and that's a nice thing, yeah? Mm. I would say that's a nice thing, I don't, and that's... Uh, do you care to know who you are? No. It's completely uninteresting. <laughs> 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 mm. Mm. I think this is, this is very characteristic, you see, that you're not interested anymore, actually. Mm. You know? Did your personality change through the awakening? No, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Well, nothing changed, everything changed. I mean, what can you say? Yeah? I still am patient sometimes. So. <laughs> I mean, we had some intense situations in the last uh, weeks. Yeah? And um, there I could see, I was very surprised that quite easily I didn't. Um, stick on them, yeah? So that was also very interesting, yeah? That it's, uh, and happens, and then more or less it's over, yeah? And perhaps sometimes afterwards I would think about it, but it's not, not, um, it just happens, even if it's very intense, and then it's over, yeah? I could have done it before, but somehow there's such a habit, there's such a habit of, um, how you deal with it, how you always have dealt with things. Yeah? So when something intense is, then you go out in the world and talk with everybody about it. Yeah? If you are so in your habit and the world is supporting this so much, it's very difficult to get out. Yeah? This is what I can see. It's not something which I haven't known before, yeah? or which is completely new. Yeah? It's all, everything is there before. Yeah? It's just, where's the energy? Where's the energy more? And I think this is one thing from the Open Sky House, yeah? Even, uh, I mean, I still can't expl explain from the mind what makes sense there or not, yeah? I mean, it's very difficult to explain. Yeah? I mean, when volunteers come or people ask, I yeah, often don't know what to say, yeah? what are we doing here? Yeah? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. But what I can say, it works, yeah? However it works, it works, yeah? And, um, I can see that that when you get in the energy, it all falls away by itself. Yeah, if you just throw yourself in the energy. Yeah? Uh, for years, I was looking for a teacher. I was looking for a theater teacher actually for years. Yeah, because I thought I I had a good teacher, and then he stopped working, and um, I thought I find it there. Yeah. And what I could clearly see, I mean, I've done a lot of therapy, I've done a lot of all kinds of stuff, yeah. And uh, my life, life was very nice before I moved to the, before I met you or in the Open Sky House. I mean, I had a, lived in a very nice, on a very nice farm and had a very nice job and everything was very nice, yeah. But I also could see that there are things inside which I can't reach, yeah. That there are still dark corners, there are still things, and I knew that I can't get there. It's a thing like if you are on stage yeah, and if you have a good theater teacher, he brings the stuff out, yeah? And he brought a lot of stuff out, a lot of stuff, yeah? And, uh, but when he stopped working, I could still go to theater workshops or to other teachers, but if you don't have somebody bringing it out, I could see myself moving away from situations, yeah? And I could say to myself, okay, next time you go on stage, you go for it, yeah? But I didn't. And now I can see also with people, you don't, you don't, yeah, because it's in the pain, you don't go in the pain by yourself, yeah. So, and I could see this, and I was really looking for somebody, yeah, really looking for somebody who uh, could help me with this, yeah. Yeah, when I bumped into you, I then, after some time, I could see that's not a theater teacher, <laughs> it's a spiritual teacher. <laughs> so, and it all... I mean, it was a relief. For me, it was a real relief, yeah? a real relief. And I think, I mean, 
There may be people who can do it themselves, I don't know. Yeah? I can clearly say I couldn't. I couldn't. <coughs> mm-hmm. And I think it's very difficult. You must be somehow, I don't know how you get in your corners which you always avoid. How do you get there? And how do you know that they are there? Yeah? How do you know? And who is telling you? Yeah? I mean, all your friends, they always say, oh, you're a nice person. Yeah? Who is telling you this? This guy I had, this uh, theater teacher, the point where he was working, he was working with people being present on stage. Yeah? And that was when I got involved with theater. I mean, I always did a bit of street theater when I was young and blah, 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 blah. Yeah? But then I came to his workshop and he had a, this amazing talent to see how present the people are on stage. Yeah? And the only thing he did, trying to get them into presence. Yeah? And that was when I got, that was the thing actually I was looking for, for presence. Yeah? In my lifetime, I've been touched from one clown. And if I think about why I was so touched, it was actually about presence mm. that I was touched. You know? mm. I mean, he hardly had to do anything. Mm. And it was like, you just felt so incredibly touched. Mm. Actually, before he would even speak, you would be touched. Small gestures, you know. Mm. But the thing that, you know, in a way really touched me, I can see now, was that he was so amazingly present. Yeah. I always wanted to embody this in my life, yeah? And uh, now it feels really that it's definitely much more there, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely much more there. It is amazing to see that self-realization is a very simple and beautiful gift. It can happen to every human being if they are ready to prepare themselves and to make it a priority in their lives. So what's happening now? 
A lot of energy moving. What's happening now? A lot of energy moving! And now? A lot of energy moving! And now? Ah! <laughs> A lot of energy moving. <laughs> <laughs>